At the other end of the spectrum was a game in Philadelphia that lasted just the regulation nine, but one in which the Pirates had a first inning indicator that this was going to be their night. Dan Slyke with a base hit to right field. Bond scores and the Pirates have the one nothing lead. Base hit to center. Van Slyke will score. Down the left field line. That's going to score at least two. Base hit to center. King scores 5-0. Pirates. Quinones will score at 6-0. The Pirates lead. And Bonds with a drive. Deep right field. Go ball. Get out of here. It's a three-run shot for Bonds. And the Pirates lead 9-0. Base hit to center. The Pirates have reached double figures. A 10-0 lead in the first inning brings out the Yogi in everyone. I looked at the uh, Empires and I said, yeah, we finally got a lead. They said, you finally got a lead in one game. And I said, yeah, but you know, it's, it's not over yet. A lot of times during the course of a season, you'll score 10 or more runs in nine innings. And when it happens in the first inning, you're down 10 runs. You got a good chance to come back and win the ball game. But Pirates broadcaster Jim Rooker felt otherwise and led off the bottom of the first with a bold proclamation. Well, a leadoff double for Randy Reddy. Well, I'll tell you something right now. If we lose this game, I'll walk back to Pittsburgh. You'll have to. I won't have to, but I will. <laughs> and from beneath the broadcast mic, the Phillies made plans for Rooker's hike. Right center field, the ball is gone. The Phillies quickly get two runs back in the bottom of the first inning. Still, it looked hopeless, so Philadelphia decided to rest a few vets. We had played a lot of games in a row, so I said, hey, this is a good chance to rest some of my starters. You know, uh, I take Tommy Hur out of the lineup. He jelts out at second base, replacing Tommy Hur. Tom Hur came out after his first at bat, and I went to second base. Uh, my first at bat, I walked Von Hayes, hit his second home run. Deep to right, Hayes with his second home run of the night, and the Pirates lead is now 10-4. to in my second at bat, I came up with a man on against Bob Watt. Threw me an 0-2 curveball, left it over the plate, down and in, kind of. Jelts with a drive to right center. Ball is gone. Jelts with a two-run home. The Pirate lead is now 10-6. Steve Jelts gets only his third career home run. I could have told you then that there was a good chance we were going to lose that game. When you're a manager, you... Your gut usually tells you that uh, something's not right, it's a freaky thing, and you can usually feel it. But the Pirates added still another run before the Phillies impromptu slugger once again came to the plate. And they will bring up Babe Ruth. Yes. Third time I came up, I had two men on uh, against Bob Kipper. Threw me a 2-0 fastball up and in. Drive to left field. Bonds is back to the warning track for the wall. It's gone. I don't even, I don't believe it. It's now 11 to 9. And these fans who came into the ballpark tonight were stunned by a pin run first inning by the Pirates now on their feet, cheering their Phillies who have made a tremendous comeback to make it an 11 to 9 ball game. And they want a curtain call for Steve Jeltz. And when Jeltz dings you twice, it's just a matter of time. This has become a bad dream. Jordan with a ground ball through the middle. Quinones cuts it off. It's 11 to 10. I think it was Freddie's revenge at the time. The ball game is going to be tied. Ground ball up the middle. Lean off his glove. One run scores. Coming around is Dernier. He'll score. The throw to third not in time. Phillies lead 13 to 11. Fly ball into left center field. John Cruck over. He's there. The Phillies bounce back from a 10-0 deficit. They beat the Pirates the final 15 to 11. And so there was this matter of a walk through Coatesville and Lancaster and Shippensburg and Gettysburg. If we lose this game, I'll walk back to Pittsburgh. You know, when you make a statement like that, it's, obviously you're thinking that's the last thing in the world you're going to have to do. His feet are going to do the talking for him. There's no question about that. I think that you have to school yourself to say those things among yourselves between innings. Never say something like that on the air. And believe me, we've been even more careful ever since Rooker got into trouble. <laughs> but you're a man of your word. 
and you're going to make the walk. Indeed he did, leaving the vet October 5th, destined to arrive in Pittsburgh 12 days later with some newfound bunions and a humble resolve. Boy, that's a long walk. I want to walk 